Hi. Welcome to NPR. I'm now testing my configuration for my camera filming setup for watercolor. I'll now do some ASMR. That's good. Okay, uh, now I'm going to be going after my sky. I know what you're thinking. You're like, Denny, I can't paint a sky. Get some self-confidence and then get yourself some cobalt blue or some kind of blue. It doesn't even have to be cobalt. It could be literally any damn blue. It doesn't matter. Get purple, I don't care. Get gray and get yourself cloud secret weapon. Dug on paper towel. That's it. That's it. I just unlocked every sky in watercolor. What was that? 15 seconds? Maybe? Alright. Time to put my damn money where my mouth is here. Okay, this is nice and dry. I let this dry overnight. I had some pretty thick paint in here. Um, but I like it. It turned out cool. Uh, cooler than... I mean, it's warmer because of the color temperature. It's a hilarious artist joke. Okay, I kind of want a pretty electric sky. I'll pull some of this crazy-ass blue. They call that crazy ass blue in the business and whatever just for fun scotia lavender these are jelly gouache so they're reactivated with water and they are wet in your palate all the time i find it very useful to have paint just always ready to go uh, it's so much easier to just pick up a damn paintbrush and paint something if you've already got a bunch of paints that are just chilling, ready to go. These paints require a little bit of upkeep. You kind of have to keep them, you know, wet. I have a bunch of these mist bottles and then mix it up to keep the paint from drying out because trust me, I've let this set dry out and it was a pain in the butt to get everything back to this consistency. So leave it in this consistency if you can, okay? Okay. Now for my gray, what I'm gonna try to do is not just grab, you know, a little bit of black. What I'm gonna try to do is use the techniques of color mixing to, to get myself to a gray color uh, using its complementary color and mixing the two together, thereby neutralizing the color. And the way that to do this is you start with your primary color and then slowly add in your complementary color from the other side. And as you can see, you've got black in the middle, so this will, you know, go towards the center. And I want this to be a blue-gray, so I want to add less intensity of some kind of an orange to this to gray it out. That's my understanding of color theory. I know there's differences between like warmer oranges and cooler oranges that can affect things because they can lean, you know, green or... <sighs> too many people know too many things. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some orange over here for my gray. Doing this Bob Ross style today, which I'm, I'm digging it. Got the palette in my hand. I'm using a big ol' flat brush for this. I'm just gonna go crazy here. I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue. Okay, so one of the first things that you can do to start to do a good painting is to just set yourself up for success, okay? I've got my paints already out. I've got, and you know what? Just for, just to be safe, I'm gonna clean this because here's what happens. You get, you get going and you get racing. So take the time up front and just get everything ready 
you know, kind of a first first pass of things that you think you're gonna need for this round of the painting. So right now, all I've gotta worry about is the sky and maybe getting some clouds in here. Um, I think the sky is an important element of this painting to help show the, just the vast depth of this painting and how far back it goes. And also the, like the incredible kind of blueness of the sky. I definitely want to get, okay, so this brush is going to soak up a lot of paint. I think I got enough here though to do what I want to do. Okay, so starting from, I'm going to start from the top, work my way down with my blue color, uh, and then I'm going to add in gray, show where basically the bottoms of my clouds are going to be. And then I'm going to use my little feller here to dab out the areas where I want the sky to stay more white. Although it's not white anymore, it's yellow, but it sh I'm hoping that that'll give the impression of like really brightly lit clouds. Um, the yellow um, underpainting that I did. Uh, enough talk. Talk is cheap, Denny. Here we go. Let's start blue. I got plenty of blue. I'm going to do just a teeny bit of white in there. And then I am going to add just a tiny bit of purple to my mix. I'm going to leave some purple ready to go. Uh, and then I'll just kind of work it into the brush as I go. It kind of gives a nice, a nice effect. In fact, let's do it right now. I'm just going to work in some of that purple and maybe a little bit more of that blue. That's going to be a pretty strong effect, but, uh, and I got to work quickly. I'm probably going to need a little bit more water than this. Because I want a nice, a nice pool to work with. This brush does hold a good amount of paint, which is great. I just got this from like a, I don't know, it's like a clearance little chip brush, and I'm really digging it. It's really good texture. Okay, so nice and blue. And then I'm just gonna run this all the way down and let that water kind of run out and we'll just see how we how we get on here. Here we go. Maybe I can give myself like some indications of clouds, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. There's a more important thing. Getting these colors how I like them. Keep this pretty nice and wet. And then as I get down closer towards my horizon line, I'm going to kind of feather this through a little bit more. Maybe dry it more. all the way down. I think I can still figure out what I got going here. Okay, and now I'll go gray this out a little bit. This is definitely trending green. What do I need? Maybe a little more red in there. So I go with a little more of like a raw umber or whatever. Trend back towards gray. Okay, I'm getting there. Okay, and then let's go. Clouds, clouds, there's trees right there, that's okay. Clouds here. 
nice cloud here. This kind of looks like a cloud. Maybe I can live in that world somehow. I might get a little cauliflower in here. We'll see. And then back here a little bit. And then yeah, maybe just a Okay, and then one kind of coming off, maybe like it's going off the page. Now, quickly, just gonna try to dab. Off some of this, some of this is already drying on me. That dried quick. Okay. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to switch right into bettering out some edges. Real quick, like. Do you want a cloud? Dude, I don't know. It's still wet. When in doubt, leave it the fuck alone, right? Um, this dried out faster than I thought. No big deal. I was hoping to retain a little bit more of what my white and my clouds. Um, but you know what? That's what gouache is for is you can always come back over top of this with some white at the end. So, boom, you get a you get a free reset button there. Uh, or a free undo button or whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna let this little wash dry and then we'll uh, we'll see what happens in the, in the next one. Onward and upward, right? Quick disclaimer. This is usually the portion of the painting uh, that I just hate this thing. I look at it and I'm saying this is the ugliest thing I've ever done. I've screwed it up. I have to fight that. You're going to have to fight that too. There's going to come a point in every painting when no matter what you actually might observe in your mind, you've decided that it sucks and it's a waste of time. You can do a couple of things in this scenario. You can do what I usually do, which is hide this in a cupboard or something and never show it to anyone ever again. I've wasted an hour doing this stuff and then it just goes in a cupboard never to be seen again. When in reality, you've done the hardest part of the painting and it only gets easier from here. You have to start. That's really all there is to it. So what we end up doing as artists, when we get into this mentality that this is wasted and to move on, is all we're doing is starting paintings and getting failures over and over. Starting a painting, failing at a painting. Starting at a new painting, failing at a new painting. When there's a lot of success to be had here, even if this is ruined and I have to redo the commission, I am learning things as I go, I'm practicing new techniques, and it's okay. And what you're going to find is as you get further and further into the painting, you're going to get your groove and you're going to figure out where everything's going to live and all your shapes are going to come in and it's going to start looking really cool. So if you're like me, just 
take a step away. I usually do as soon as I feel that moment of like, this is terrible. I just leave. I come back in 20 minutes, look at it, look at it from across the room if you can and say, oh yeah, there's stuff that's, that's cool about that. That's no big deal. You just gotta get your eyes off of it for a second. So with that being said, uh, my next phase here will be uh, the kind of the ground plane of this, uh, of this image. Um, and I'm really gonna be working on mostly greens, mixing colors to achieve the greens that I want while retaining some of this nice yellow color, especially down here towards the bottom as we get to a little bit more kind of dappled grass and you can kind of see down into the grass, you'll see more of the ground underneath. So this is gonna be part of my ground plane too. Uh, yeah, whatever, second washes are, are difficult. Let's, uh, let's get after it. I made that. <laughs>